just want to thank you all. We had a wonderful time yeah. last night. I put a disclaimer out there because y'all was looking good. Yes. So some of y'all I told to go straight home after that event. And Reverend and I were going to be checking for making sure no one left with phone numbers. And I did hear that some did, Reverend. Some left with phone numbers from last night. So I ain't gonna tell some. Some had left with phone number. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to, she got a head down. <laughs> we had so much fun. The women, everybody was like, oh my God, the ladies look so good. They look so good. But then when the men came out, <laughs> with them suits and top hats and those burgundy bones, y'all look good. Y'all look good. I had some sorority sisters there. I had to tell, look, let me tell you something. Keep, keep, you keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> we, yes. We had so much fun, and all the churches were coming up to us and was like, oh, my God, this is wonderful. This is wonderful. We need y'all to come do this for us. Yes. I got about 32 hurting feet right now. All of our feet hurt. <laughs> and, and a lot of them need to get a chance to eat. Reverend and I had to eat when we got home. Yeah, a lot of y'all. I'm sorry. Okay. I can get, you know what? And I, I threatened them. I said I better have some cake in my car. <laughs> so we also had, I don't see one of our ladies, but we also had some presentations last night. So she's not here today. She's probably going to come a little later. But by vote, you guys all voted for your woman of Zion of the day. Oh, she's here. Okay, so with your vote, and the vote was very, very tight. You guys made it really hard this year. I even had to come after the meeting. We voted for a woman of Zion. It was a tie. So I had to come that next Sunday and ask you guys who all didn't vote to vote. Mm -hmm. And on that vote, we got our woman of Zion of the year. Wow. And it is this event. And the woman of Zion of the Year is a woman who shows. <laughs> she shows her loyalty to Mount Zion by her walk, by her talk, Amen. by her Amen. actions. Amen. She's just, she's just, she has all of the goals that we have set in store. She, this person gets on board with the vision of our pastor. Yes. She gets on the, even if there are some naysayers, she still is on that same vision with us. Yes. And she has won our Woman of Zion. I know I said the Woman of Zion. So thank you, Evangelist, for all that you do. Amen. And you is truly deserved. Amen. Thank you. We also had another, um, you want to talk about our second one? Okay, <laughs> so we also had a second, it wasn't a woman design of the year, but it was a, for your loyalty and for your commitment and yes. just for being there for us. Yes. And that was given to Sister Tiana Murray. Yes. And she loves butterflies, so she received a crown of butterflies. And our best dressed single male. Oh, there you go. 
Our best dressed single male for the night was Tyree Murray. Tyree had on solid gold. From the top of his head to the soles of his feet. Everything was solid gold, and it was the blingy solid gold. His brother was upset because he they were actually clapping for him because he was in gold also, but then Tyree came out blinging <laughs> and ended up taking it. Our best dressed single female was none other than Sister Val's mother. <laughs> she took home the best dressed single female. And our best dressed couple. <laughs> Gold took it home last night. So I just want to thank you all again. I mean, I am full. I am full. You guys just, you just don't know how it made me feel to look out there and see all about Zion. I mean, because there's a lot of churches that don't support the First Lady. They let her just go out and, you know, be on her own. <laughs> But I was just so, I was, I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. Everything was beautiful. The tables were beautiful. The, the clothing was beautiful. And as you guys see, you didn't have to wear flapper dresses. People were, you know, they wore their regular church clothes. And I mean, and everything was beautiful. And like I said, all of the churches loved it. All of the communities loved it. We had, we had our, our goal was 120 and we met it. Yes. So thank you guys. Thank you for all your hard work. I know it was a lot to be in all of those people. Thank you so much. Oh yes. I'm, I'm sorry. Reverend and I could not participate in the best dressed outfit. So we had two outfits. The first one was burgundy and black. Reverend had on this hollow vest. Whoop, whoop. It was, it was short in the front, and then it had tails in the back. It was burgundy. And he had his high heels on. And he had on his high heels. And he, and he had his old school, um, it had ruffles in it, shirt, with a big bow tie. Then he came back out with his gold on. And had on his gold, well, he had a gold vest, right? He had on his gold vest, his gold bow tie. Yeah, he, he was looking good. He was looking sharp, like they said. He was looking sharp last night. Yeah, he was. He saw it. So thank you again. service award to a gentleman who was not even a member of our church. He's actually a minister at another church. Uh, minister Rod Stuckey, who is the, uh, the youth minister under uh, Pastor Larry Mills of Mount Sinai, uh, Michigan Baptist Church. He has done phenomenal in the, in the youth community. And I, I, just, I just felt the spirit of the Lord to say, celebrate him on that night. And so he came just expecting to come and be a part of it. We thought it was some, just some, him and some wife time uh, to get away. And, and those are the reasons that, that I want to let you know why God gives me the vision that he gives me. 
And I don't want you to think that I'm doing anything to slight anyone or put pressure on anyone. But let me tell you something. How do you think the disciples felt trying to feed 5,000 people? Hmm. Wow. All right. Say again. <laughs> How do you think they felt? You sure all 12 of them was on board? No. no. I'm sure two of them said, what is he doing, man? We ain't got no fish. We ain't got no bread. We can't feed these people. Why would he even set this up? But when it all came out at the end of the day, yes. did not God reign? Yes. Huh? We had a great word from Bishop Kimball and Lady Kimball. Yes. Did God not reign? Yes. I want to challenge you. If God gives you a leader that is willing to sacrifice all that he has, Appreciate it. Say it, Robert. Yes. And here's why. Because I'm a firm believer that anyone is willing to give all that they have, God will not give you the wrong. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing me? Yeah. You won't have them wrong. Think about all the people who've really been there for you and everything you've ever done. God don't give you a long time to it. Now, maybe 30 years seems like a long time to you, but that. But a thousand years is a blink of an eye to him. You get what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is you got to think about these things. When God gives you someone who will love you unconditionally, <coughs> put up with all your stuff, go through all your temper tantrum and depression bones and things of that nature, he won't give you to him long. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to put out a disclaimer. I know that earlier this week I put out a text. And basically, I wanted to let you know that I had a moment, because I'm human. Yeah. But I want to tell you something. I didn't do it because I was depressed. I was disappointed. That's two different things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Depressed means I got no hope. Come on, Reverend. Mm -hmm. And I love God too much not to have no hope. All right. Amen. But I was disappointed. <clears throat> and I'm hoping that you will feel the same way. Disappointed. When you know we can do better, it should disappoint you. That makes sense? Yes. Don't take it personal, but take it personal. Because we got people that watch us, listen to us, follow us, copy us, emulate us. Not that we're better, we're yet different. And because we're different, God uses us to be better. Amen? So I want to encourage you that you are part of something great. And if y'all don't mind, just give me just 10 seconds of your time and just stand on your feet and put your hand together and tell God, thank you for all that he's done in your life, all that he's done with you, all that he's done for you, because you can all be dead and gone. You can be right now, somebody get ready to do your eulogy this weekend. I want my to wow. I have God in my life this morning. You know, you see it. Side note, um, funeral arrangements for Mother Norma Bird, one of our mothers of this ministry, will be next Saturday the 28th at 12 noon here at Mount Zion Tabernacle Christian Church. 12 noon. If you're asking, do I need you, the answer is yes. She is a member of this place. We need to represent her. Amen. 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 Sister Becky will be needing some help with ushers and greeters. We will need people prepared for those who are going to have a hard time going through this. Amen. So you got two kind of people at a funeral, guys. Them that remember and them that regret. You'll know the difference between the two. We don't need every soul on board. Amen. 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 So please, if you can, represent, be here, be prepared to uh, help in any way possible. There will not be a gravesite um, uh, discernment, so we'll be doing a, a committal here. Uh, my understanding, her body will be going to one of the um, uh, veteran uh, cemeteries. Amen. Amen. So with that being said, Friday night, the 27th, her viewing, it's not Friday night, it's actually in the afternoon. It's from 2 to 4 at Mitchell's. 
And I know that may be hard for some of y'all, not sure. From 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. is the viewing for Mother Bird at Mitchell's off of uh, Ferguson, Fair, Fair, Villa. Fair, Villa. Fair Villa. Fair Villa. Amen. Right across from the. From the American Legion. Right, they know what they did. They're like they don't know what I was going to say. Some of them still have dropped some napkins over the people parking lot. American Legion. Amen. Y'all will be over there. Right there where the real man had a. They know. Okay. I feel more, so much better. I, I was hoping I was going to put them out in a compromised position. <laughs> y'all know what American Legion is. Y'all ain't never done nothing wrong. <laughs> I want to thank uh, Sister Tony Schumann. The website is getting, I'm getting great reviews from the people. She's tired. She had a long time. <laughs> she had on this federal. Uh, we have a long Show down. Yeah. Some of the feathers made it to our house. To our house, to our house. Anybody else have feathers? And I was trying to see, are they growing back? Cause she never, she never lost. She had a shawl, you know, the long, like two twenty shawl with the feather. And my mom, I mean, it looked like it was chicken fighting. There. It was feathers everywhere, and she looked like she didn't lose one feather off that. And then Sister Palmer said, you need to stop it. She just stopped shaking it. <laughs> so we thank you for your feathery love. <laughs> Put your hands together again for what God is doing. <laughs> Sister Tasha. <laughs> Will you come? Sister Tasha is a native of the Bahamas. And her relative lives there. And uh, we... If you did not know, we were blessed to have over 100 cases of water, food, clothing, women products. Uh, one, one of my good friends, uh, Superintendent Constable Romo from the Nassau Bahamas Police, he came up, we loaded him up, he went back down with it. Uh, and so we're trying to see about maybe every quarter being able to start having stuff put together to send down. But I just wanted her to speak because she still has family there and whatever praise report or whatever God would give her to say. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for all your prayers for the people of Bahamas. Um, my dad's side of the family is from there, so a lot of them did lose their homes and you know their material products or material things, but they're still alive, thank God. So I just wanted to say thank you for all of the donations and everything that was, you know, given to the people of Bahamas. And I gave my dad the number to the connection, um, rolling. So a lot of my family is going to be able to get everything that you guys signed. So I just want to say thank you for everything, and they really do appreciate that. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord blessing God in the Bahamas school. Do we have anybody else that may have family or from the Bahama area? Anyone? Okay, I want to make sure. Sister, oh, Sister Jamie. All right, one love. Oh, that's all connected. It's all in there somewhere. All right, American, Caribbean, Yucatan. It's all the same. Amen. We all God's people. Amen. Amen. So let's make sure we continue to do that. I will also ask, um, so Jamie, you know, since Tasha will we'll form together, you will be our um, go-to go-between for what I do with um, Elder Road. Uh, his wife is a minister down in the Bahamas, uh, Patrice, and she's doing an awesome job there. Uh, we might have to get her up. Uh, she's written a few books. She's a great prayer warrior. Uh, Mother Hagen was here today. She, she got right down here on this floor. And she prayed uh, for not just her, her her great country, but ours as well. Amen? Amen. So please, guys, I know you think, not about I'm, 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 I'm going to rewind it. I know you believe that you're going through things that, you know, maybe nobody's listening, but God is listening. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I want to let you know that, you know, a lot of people are going through a lot of things. Amen? Amen? So just reach out. 
to somebody, let them know. Let them know God has a hand in their life. Amen? Amen. Amen. I have an announcement from uh, Elder Owens. You might see that. Uh, Good morning, Mom. Good morning. Um, there was a meeting scheduled for next week, Saturday at 10 to 12, but we know we got the funeral, right? Right. But you're not off the hook. <laughs> we need every parent and child here at 10 o'clock. We're going to go from 10 to 11. Please don't drop your child off and keep on riding because we need the parents and children from 10 to 11. We make it out a little early because of the funeral. But please, parents, we're getting ready to do something with your children. Amen. And you need to know what we're going to do with your children. Amen. Please come next Saturday at 10 o'clock. We're going to have snacks for the kids only after the meeting. <laughs> now, we don't need all the snacks they leave. So please, please, parents and children, from 10, and any adult who want to work with the youth, please come. God is going to move on behalf of the youth department. But we need all of y'all here. Amen. I said we need. We can't do this by ourselves. We need your help. Thank you. Amen. 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 And let me just say, I don't want to um, rain on anyone's parade. If you have a desire to work with the youth, there is a vetting system that I have in place. Amen? Uh, background checks must be done, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Are we on the same page? Yes, sir. Um, we can use intermittently for you know, small event type things, but full-time relationship with the kids must be done through the vetting system. Amen? Amen. Y'all trust me on that, right? Yes. Yeah. Be interested with your children I have to make sure that they have a safe environment. Yes. Amen? Amen? Yes, amen. So, if all hearts and minds are clear, uh, let's prepare our minds for giving this morning. Time to give! Yes, yes sir! <laughs> <laughs> I said it's time to give. Yeah. 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 One more time. It's about value this time, guys. It's time to give. If you have an electronic, now, what I found out is, if you give by PayPal through the website, if you do not have a PayPal account, then your name will not show up in the, in the giving. It will just show as a transaction. So if you're doing it for recording purposes, you will have to make you a PayPal account so that it can show your full name. If not, you may step to the rear, and our finance area there will help you with your normal giving through electronic PayPal, and that will be recorded from that way. So, if you will come from my left, all will stand. Amen. You may come.
people who make it are still blessed and really blessed by everybody who made it. Amen. 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 Now we'll have a praise dance by Expressions of Zion. <laughs> The recap of last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just read my mind. <laughs>
Come on, put your hands together like you love God today. We can do a little better than that. I thought I had some change, folks, up in here. Pick me up, turn me around, place my feet on solid rock. Any change, folks, today? Out. 
Amen. Chapter 6, verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, Children, be obedient to your parents in union with the Lord, for this is righteous. Honor your father and your mother. It's the first command with the promise. That it may go well with you, and you may remain long, child on this earth. Son of a pastor Murray. Put your hand together for our presiding Marvin Allen. Marvin's daddy walked over and asked him, How you doing today? And he said, Fine. And he gave him one of them old Pastor Murray, the Lord needs your speeches. That trick question. So, but we thank you for all that you've done today, Marvin. Thank God for you. Don't feel picked on just about every youth in here that done, including my boys. And if I haven't got to you yet, I'm coming. Amen. 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 How many believe they want to hear a word from the Lord today? We'll get right to it for the sake of time. I will get you out of here. We have another service at three. I want you to grab your Bibles. Grab your Bibles. I want you to go to the book of Matthew. The fourth chapter. Book of Matthew, the fourth chapter. Book of Matthew, the fourth chapter. Find you with mind standing on your feet. You're going to play the same thing. I'm talking about that. <laughs> Amen. So look at Matthew, the fourth chapter, starting with the first verse. He said, Then was Jesus led up the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came, and when the tempter came, say it with me, and when the tempter came, and when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by some words. Every word. Most words. Every word. Every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Yes. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of the church. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, yes. cast thyself down, for it is written. Yes. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Yes. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, yes. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again. again. The devil took him up into 
took him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him some, all. most, all. all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said unto him, some these all. things, all. most these things, all. all these things I will give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Huh. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan. Say it with me, for it, for it is, written, is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. You may be seated. Father God, this morning, I ask that you would spread your love upon us, Lord. I thank you for all that is said and all that is done. Lord, I ask right now you will separate us from our sins and put us in a place of salvation. Remove from us, Lord, the spirit of depression, the spirit of animosity, the spirit of anger. And place on us, Lord, the spirit of patience, joy, and long-suffering. For you are the author and the finisher of our very faith. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 comfort zone for them a lot to be in public. Unless uh, you my baby boy, he just think he all that in a bag of chips. But anyway, <laughs> get it from his dad. <laughs> he got confidence. I got no problem with that. Amen? Amen. I just teach him not to be arrogant. But what God's doing today, I, I, you know, this is the last part of my series on how to give in a taking world. How to give in a taking world. And I pray that after this is done, this series, how many people went and anointed their houses when asked to do so from the first week? Only four? Five? Y'all missed that service, huh? Okay, one more time. This is the last Sunday of this series. I need you to go home after the day's service and anoint your homes. Your door wells, your door knobs, your bedrooms, your kitchens, your bathrooms, yes. your window sills. I want you to anoint your whole house. I want you to go out there to your vehicle. I want you to anoint your vehicle. I want you, everybody that lives in your house, I want you to anoint them. I want you to anoint yourself. Are we listening? Yes. When you go to work, I want you to make sure your hand is real greasy. <laughs> And everybody you shake hands with, yes. I want you to anoint them and say in your mind, the anointing. Yes. Don't say nothing to them, because they might get offended. So, let God use you. Amen? Amen? Then I want this. For the next three weeks, I want three times a day for you to find three minutes to pray. The next three weeks, three times a day, you will pray for three minutes. Are you hearing me? Yes, amen. Now, this is what God is telling me to tell you. Do not decipher the pastors making me do something and then not do it. Amen? amen? This is your relationship with the Lord. You have to believe what you believe. And if you don't believe what you believe, then you won't believe what you believe. But I believe God is getting ready to do something great in everyone's life who's willing to take hold of that. Three weeks, three times a week, 
Three minutes. Now put your hands together for God. You believe that? <laughs> Give it on to the best church my side of heaven. Yeah. To our guests thus far, we pray you have seen and heard from the Lord. Amen. To my great brother, my one of my accountability partners, um, I, I, I love when he comes. I try to find an excuse to get him and his wife down here every chance I can. Pastor Andre Smith. Sister Smith, Amy Smith, before you leave today, that's for a lady, can't people. She tried to catch you last night. I, please hug her before you leave, because I got to deal with it after you go gone now. Amen, amen. So you want to see both of y'all. I got that off me. But I'm going to deal with a familiar passage here. Um, this is a... A, a, a time in the Lord where Jesus is showing, I think, one of the most humanistic relationships you can have. He has just spent from 40 days and 40 nights fasting and opening himself for the Lord. He has now made himself more vulnerable than he could ever have been in his tenure. If you are a person that has not had the opportunity to fast just yet, I would pray that you would seek God's face in that. For he says that some things come through prayer and fasting. And it's more than just you not eating. You can do intermittent fasting, as a doctor would call it, just by not being able to get a chance to eat. It is a determined mind to separate yourself from natural things for a moment for your spirit to take over. It is a very uncomfortable feeling. It is a very vulnerable feeling. For you ladies, I would say it's similar to once you have had a baby and grandma said you can't go outside. That makes sense? <laughs> You are now vulnerable to infection. This is going to make sense in a minute. And for those of you who are spiritually fasting, you are open more now to sin than ever before. But you're also at your strongest if you allow that fasting to take over. It is not designed to demean you. It is not designed to make you feel less of a person. It will design you to be a stronger person in Christ. Many dare not even venture into fasting because it is a struggle, a challenge, an issue, a situation, because everything seems to come against you during the fast. I would go to say it's a little deeper than that. You are more now aware of what's coming against you because you're in that fast. Your awareness is heightened. Your senses, your spiritual senses are heightened. You're able to smell the very essence of sin. Well, why do you say that? The Bible says that, that, that the sin is like a stitch to the nostrils of God. So if he dwells in me and I'm dwelling in him, I will be able to even smell the very essence of sin. My thoughts, my mouth, my speech, my actions, the actions of others, the speech of others. It will say, you will sense something is off kilter or is right in tune to the Spirit of God. It's new territory. I love it. I enjoy it. I welcome the fast days. Let me help you with something, though. If you're a person that fasts, and those who can agree will agree, people look at you differently. Because you're not moved by the natural things of the world. To be absent in the body, which is fasting, is to be present 
with the Lord. And so you don't have time for trivial conversations, trivial mindsets, trivial emotions of people. And so you sometimes may seem direct. Some would say you good at two shoes. But you just find yourself reserved. Now you won't be running around skinning and grinning. You, you will find yourself wanting to be isolated during that fast because it is allowing you to have more and more one on time with God and you don't want to waste your time on, with folk who don't want to hear from God. Come on, yes. Now it's not meant for you to run around and to promote to everybody. No. I'm fasting, Kenny. Well, number one, never tell an enemy your secret. You're going to catch this in a minute. What if Kenny's all kilter? What if Kenny got some other intention? What if Kenny had an ulterior motive the whole time is with you, and now you told him that you're fasting, you're now saying, I'm open and vulnerable. I'm going to teach this. Can I walk this? So there Jesus was. 40 days and 40 nights. It is shown through medical terms that when you do not hydrate or eat well, you hallucinate. You see things. Mirages, if you will. So Jesus was at a very, very critical state of humanity. The Bible says, not if, in verse 3, he says, and when the tempter came. You see, fasting will also put a glow on you. And if you know anything about them bugs, them mosquitoes, you remember the back poach of that ski? You remember the no, never, back, back poach? You remember the back poach? You step outside, you can't see them, but you know they're there. They bite you every now and then, but you know they're there. But as soon as you flip the porch light on, they all draw to the light bulb. So no matter where the enemy was, as soon as he was seeing the light of God, Bellowing out from 40 days of fasting, the purity of it all, it was like blood to a vampire. Yeah. I'm going to walk this one down. And he came, just like he came to one of y'all this week, just like he came to me. He don't have no respect of person either now. Not at all. He don't just mess with the members and not believe them. He don't just mess with the children and not the parents. He don't just mess with the, the subordinates and not the bosses. He goes around looking for anyone that will accept him in. He said the tempter came to him, and, and of course, you know, he don't never come, he got something to say. That's the enemy. You ever know the enemy ever got something to say? I tell people, many people come to to say, but don't nobody come to serve. <laughs> right. They always got something to say, Mark Kim. Every time you get on the phone, child, let me tell you. No, don't tell me nothing today. I can't do it today. When I'm fasting, I don't want to hear about all what Susie shot John and Tommy Cross Town. And what, I, I can't do that today. And maybe that's what we need to start doing. I'm walking this. I know y'all want me to preach, but I'm walking this while I talk this here. We got to start separating ourselves from folk who always coming with something that's going to take from us every time we see them. Yes. Every time they show up, they're pulling something. Every time they come around, they're taking something. Every time they say something to us, we feel less of a person. Every time they go around us, we just feel weak. We feel tired. We feel weary. We feel dreary. We feel depressed. We feel disappointed. Am I talking to myself this morning? Every time they arrive. Say that, Pastor. 
Never got nothing to uplift nobody. Never got nothing to bring nobody to the next level. Never got nothing to say, you gonna make it. God got his hand on you. You just gotta keep on pushing on because I know he got a place in heaven for you. says but he answered and said it is written because he once he says what's been written that means it is what it is I remember watching a movie way back when it was one of the first Moses movies and the the, 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 the Pharaoh was Yul Brenner I'm dating myself that's okay y'all young folk google that and every time something was put in stone he said so let it be written so let it be done. And what Jesus is telling the enemy is, look, once God has said it's law, it is made what it is, I don't care what you're trying to persuade me with, I don't care what you're trying to trick me in, I know that the God lives in me. You have to do better than that. So this is what he tells us. Tell us, Reverend, tell us. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, yeah, that's right. but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. My first point, He's telling the enemy, you can't starve me. You can't starve me. See, I know what you're trying to bring to me. I done seen it a thousand times. Everything at Golden Corral, I can't eat. There's some things I can't mess with. There's some things I will not mess with. There are some people I just don't eat from. I don't get no help. It's all right. Everybody can't make me a dish that's fresh served cold. Because I like my food hot. Of the day, but I'm excited about who God is because the enemy can't stop me from wanting to love Jesus, be a part of his will, be a part of his work, and be a part of his way. Do so I got two people that can say, Devil, yeah, you gotta do better than that? Can I go there? Can I go there? I'm not starving for attention. I don't need people all over me all the time. I said in Jesus Christ, who walks with me, he talks with me and tells me that I am his own. You don't have to do better than that enemy. I don't know who you think you're playing with. Maybe you're talking about the old standing back in 79 and 86, but I come by to tell you, in 2019, this one standing man you can't get hold of. Because I love the Lord that God, and I'm not taking it back. If I just had two people that are standing along with me, you're going to have to do better. I don't care what you told the doctor. I don't care what the doctor said. I heard what he said, but I know what God is saying. You got to 
got to do better than that. Yes. <laughs> and we ought to start having a spiritual confidence about ourselves. Quit walking around with your head down, tweet your leg. Quit running around with your tail, tweet your You say, listen, God said it, that settles it. You gotta do better than that. <laughs> and if you can't find nobody who wanna come around and say, listen, girl, the devil gotta do better than that. I know you're going through some pain, but I wanna tell you, you are stronger than you really believe. God made you beautifully and wonderfully, so he had to make you strong. You can't crack, you can't break, but I tell you, the end of the day, he got some super glue, gold, gold, real gold glue. Yeah. And no nothing come loose. You just stay a wooden vessel. You just let them throw rocks at you. You just don't worry about the crack. God will seal it up. You don't worry about the problem. God will seal it up. You don't worry about the position. God will seal it up. You don't worry about the problem. God will seal it up. You don't worry about the worry. God will seal it up. You don't worry about the sadness. God will seal it up. God will seal it up. You got to do better. See what the devil don't know is. <laughs> Can I go there for a minute? Yeah. See us folk who's who fast. <laughs> we ain't worried about that not getting nothing to eat. <laughs> I live out the word for a little bit. It's okay. I don't have no physical food. It's all right. I live out the word. But every now and then, I remember mama used to sit down. She didn't have there the food she wanted to eat. Maybe she had just enough to feed her kid. She was almost watching them on saltine crackers. You know about them saltine crackers, right? I'm gonna get a little bucket of salt and cracker and sit there and watch your television. Just... And I'll stop by the table. When you got things going on against you, don't worry about it because you ain't got no full plate. All you need is what God gave you. Because maybe God trying to help get some of that spiritual weight off of you. Maybe trying to get you down to the right side. Maybe trying to get you down to the right way so you can handle what He got for you. Maybe you got too lazy and too. Open your stuff. God said, I'm going to get you down to your fighting weight. You got to do better than that. 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 Tell your neighbor, he can't starve me. I ain't home in no way. I'm already full. First lady said earlier, I'm so full. And maybe that's when you start telling the end when you come around. Girl, I got this job. Girl, I'm already full. I'm so full of what Jesus did to me today. He took me up, turned me around. Girl, take my feet on solid ground. What was you saying? What was you saying? What was you saying? Girl, my ears so full, I can't hear nothing else. If it ain't good godly news, I can't hear today. If you ain't talking about the goodness of the Lord, I just can't hear today. Please don't take it personal, but take it personal. I ain't talking to you, but I'm talking to you. I'm telling you right now, girl, I, I hear what you're saying. All I can tell you is get down on your knees. Tell God he needs to hear from him. Don't get up till he talk to you. Then he says here. Then the, little, the devil taketh him up into the holy city. He didn't say the city. The holy. The holy. Look at the enemy. Look at the enemy. Took him to the holy city. Brought him to church. He didn't take him to Cleo. I'm going to make sure y'all pay attention. He didn't take him to Cleo. He took him to church. Are y'all listening? Yeah. We didn't take it to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the alphabet store, ABC. He took him to church. Y'all not getting it. They miss it. They miss it. Y'all not getting it. He didn't take him. He didn't take him down the road to see Shaquan and him. He didn't take him on the street to see Willie James. Them. He took him to church. Y'all ain't going to the very place he figured Jesus would feel the most comfortable, the most vulnerable. I stopped by to tell you, the enemy whispered to you in church. He don't bother you down there at the liquor store because your mind already 
fix that. Let the liquor go. He don't bother you down there in the drug house because your mind already set in the drug house. He bothers you in church because he know you battling about should I listen to this word or go do what I want to do. Man, don't listen to that dude. He always talking stuff. He think he all in a bag of shit. Girl, he tell my kid, don't give him that girl. You don't see that nice car he driving out there. You know you paying for that car with your tithe and offering. Girl, you know that nice house with your car tied. Girl, you paying for that with your tithe and offering. Girl, every time you see him, they always smile and smile. Come on, Pastor. What's so funny? What's so happy? What's so joyous about life? Because the goodness of God and what he's done for me. The devil got to do better huh? than even trying to do against me. Because I know God huh? loves me. He hanging out in here. Somebody said he's welcome. Can I go, can I go natural for me? Let me go legal for y'all, for y'all legal people. You do know. If I move in with Mother Bob, right. and she let me stay there after 30 days, right. or I start getting mailed there, right. or I do any kind of work for her, right. I'm called a legal resident in her house. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You with me? You with me, right? Yeah. If somebody comes to visit me that she don't like, and she call the police, do you know that person don't have to leave? Because I'm a legal resident. Y'all not getting what's going on. We don't let the enemy come up here and hang out. And he's a legal resident in the church. So y'all want to put out people he prayed, but y'all ain't put the devil out. Y'all told the enemy it's okay to stay here because you're staying in me. But you know there's a way around that moment. You go down to the courthouse there, and it's called an eviction process. And you can put some papers together, and you can sign them papers. And if you don't want to do the evicting, you go down to the next floor, to the sheriff's office, and pay them to go and put the note on the door, right on the bedroom. Bam. You got 24 hours to get everything you own up out of here. And maybe just maybe, we need to let the devil know you no longer allowed to be in here. You're not welcome here. You're not invited here. You're not licensed here. You gotta go. I don't want you in my life. I'm over here with somebody this morning. I'm over here with me. I'm over here. Woo, staying up. We're getting all of this here. He said, then they said, he took him up in the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple. He put him right there at the top of the chain, the food chain in the church. Why should I pray for my leader? Because somebody wants it. That's what the book say. You ain't got to like me now. You show sure a lot of pray for me. And if you can't respect me, this the wrong church. I don't mean no harm, I don't mean no disrespect. If you can't respect your leader on adulterated word when he brings it to you, then you need to go where you can say whatever the pastor say. I'm okay with it. I mean, I like everything he said, but I believe God dwells in him, and that's good enough for me. I was talking to a friend earlier today. And I was saying how, how I always have to let everybody express themselves to me. But I can never express myself to them. You know, when, when I first started this job, and he told me, some others told me, it's a lonely road. And I was like, yeah, come on, man. All these friends, I see people, yeah, these pastors got all these pastor friends. Come, come over, they do each other anniversary, they hang out and whatnot. Uh -huh. You know what makes it lonely? If you're really trying to do this for God, when your wife have to, you and your wife have to sit and evaluate everything you do on a daily basis, 
and say, well, could we have done this better? Could we have said that better? What could we have done to get this result? Or maybe we should have said this, or maybe we could have done that. Instead of me saying, baby, I sure like what you got on today. <laughs> and her saying, you're the best man I could ever <laughs> ask for. Come on back now. Come on back now. Crack yourself up. I'm trying to light the mood. But I'm trying to get a point, guys. I swear, I, I mean this in those homeless ways. I thought I knew, as an associate, what a true leader goes. I'm gonna step on him now. Step on it. Sir. Forgive me if I'm wrong, Papa. She's a first lady. Her husband was a pastor. Mayor. He died the stress of the church. He died from the stress of the church. He could never do enough right. He could never say enough. She could never say enough. The children were lacking because they had to sacrifice their parents on a daily basis with people who came to church when they felt like it. Say it, Reverend. With people who gave when they wanted to. Uh, better preach. All about it. Preach. With people who hugged them and then talked about them on the way to the park. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Basis. Preach. Yeah. If you're taking this the wrong way, you're already wrong. Because you missed the whole point. But why Jesus was crying in the garden of Gethsemane. All that he was willing to die for. Knowing. That somebody still was not going to receive yes. his love. This is quality time with God that you cannot take lightly. Because one day, I promise you this, one day, you're not going to be able to sit and enjoy none of this. Mother Sheila would have traded a lot of days in the bed to come here and sit. Mother Bird would have traded a lot of days in bed to come here and sit. My mama would have traded a lot of days in bed with y'all fight to get here. I don't know, child. It's church. Ain't nobody in there no way. They ain't got nobody coming over. You don't invite nobody. Say it again, Reverend. Okay. Yeah. There, every member in here ought to have be able to look across the room and see one person they invite is still here. Mm -hmm. right. Everybody coming to the door ought to not be able to say, I know Pastor Stanley Murray and Lady Tamika Murray. Everybody? That ain't good. Mm -hmm. Sheep beget sheep. Yeah. I'm teaching this now. I know this yeah. ain't what you want to hear, but what you want to hear. You have to ask yourself. I connected to Christ because if I am, it should bother me that I'm not growing the essence of who God is. I'm not talking about a room full of people. We can get a room full of people. That's easy. <clears throat> I'm talking about converting people into disciples that they may go out to the cruel world that will hate them for everything they believe in and still say, I love God. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. To come here on Sunday morning, really just to get replenished. Yeah. And say it was a long week. Yeah. And Pastor, everything you're saying, I needed to hear today. Because yeah. I was that far from jumping ship yeah. and doing something crazy. Because <laughs> I couldn't find it in a bar. I couldn't find it in a bag. Yeah. I couldn't drink my way out of it. I couldn't smoke my way out of it. I couldn't lie my way out of it. Yes. I couldn't cry my way out of it. Yes. I needed Jesus. Yes. And you just reminded me yes. where I'm supposed to be. Yes. 
We sit in here all year long. God ain't told me to go hug nobody. We have guests that come in. I just went to a church at 10 o'clock to talk to them about their church layout, their security measures. And I told them the biggest thing you could ever do to decrease violence is your church is love people. Yes, yes, yes. Don't just sit next to somebody. Don't just sit in front or behind somebody. Welcome them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because one out of four people come in emotionally stressed. Mm -hmm. To the point that what goes on in here could change their life forever. Mm -hmm. But we so high on what's going on with us. Things ain't where we want it to be. We miss it. We miss the low level and we miss the high level. You know how? We forget about the one who needs the least amount of stress possible to do one of the most effective jobs possible. You should worry whether your pastor stressed them. I don't mean to use the word worry, but you should be concerned. If your first family is struggling. Just because we don't look it. I'm not going to I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not going to walk around looking like I lost everything. That just can't happen. I don't have that kind of demeanor. I don't do it well anyway. I'm bougie for a reason. I, I look that way for a reason. Because most of my career, I'm around people who feel less fortunate. And if I stay around there, I'll have the same spirit. So I have to exalt some things God has given me so that I don't have to walk around here feeling like I'm less of a man, less of a father, less of a husband, less of a pastor. Is somebody going to hear me this morning? I'm not saying you got to worship me. That's not what I'm saying. However, at the end of the day, Everybody want to feel appreciated. Everybody want to feel appreciated. That little baby sitting with that yellow dress want to feel appreciated. Brother Coco, Deacon Coco wants to feel appreciated. I'm about to get out of here. So, he says you can't starve me. But then he says, and he said unto him, Thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down. Come on, Reverend. Come on, Reverend. Kill yourself. Suicide. Jump off. But that's a couple of meanings to this, right? When he says cast thyself down, because remember he already said, sit himself on a pinnacle. Now he's telling him, humble yourself. See, the devil give you half truth. Whole lies. Right? Yes. He's telling him to humble himself. He says, Written, he shall give his angels charge concerning them, and in thy hand thou shalt bear thee up, least at any time thou shalt bear thy foot against the stone. So he's telling him, just humble yourself. But he's trying to tell him, humble himself to sin, not to salvation. Because it's amazing how the stuff we know we ain't supposed to do, we're real humble. We let people run all over us, talk to us any kind of way, treat us any kind of way. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. You don't have them kind of people that every time you see them, they always saying something negative to you, always beating you up, but you can't quit calling them. Mm. <laughs> I hope I'm helping somebody. You know they don't mean you no good. You know they don't want you. You know they ain't going to show you no appreciation. You know they're going to treat you like God, but you just can't stop. Listen to them boys on the phone. You make excuses for them. You say, well, child, they've been through some things. And girl, you don't understand them. And they had some stuff going on with them. But that don't mean they got to still do me any kind of way. The Bible said I, that I should be like a welcome man, not a door man. I mean, you come on in, man. But you better wipe your feet off when you come up in here. You're not going to come in and say anything you want to say to me. Do anything you want to do to me. Just because I said I love Jesus. Where did you do that at? Synagogue, saw that your cousin was in there playing spades and <laughs> they were having a poker game. They were doing dominant. Okay, I'll get no help. It's okay. They were running the wheel and everything. They put money all on the table. And the Lord, when they flipped over some table, you're not going to come in here and do anything that you want to do in here. This is the house of God. And it wasn't what they were doing, it was the mindset that what they were doing. 
They weren't doing anything to edify nobody. They weren't doing anything to educate nobody. They weren't doing anything to elevate nobody. They were doing everything for their own selfish motive. And if you're doing anything in this church because it just works for you, then you already wrong. God will never push you out your envelope. <laughs> well, I don't do no second service, Pastor. That just ain't what I do. <laughs> that what the Holy Ghost said? <laughs> I got people I meet every day that say, Pastor, I wish I could get a Sunday off. I work four Sundays a month. I can never get off to go to church. I wish I could get one Sunday to come and just hear God's word. I got people that's out every Sunday and they wish they was at work. He said, Jesus said unto him, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now he's telling him, you have to do better than that. Now you can't starve me. Now he said, you can't stir me. Because I believe God has his hands on me. He said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. That means you will not mix up what God is saying. You will not put in a place what God has not put in place. You will not say what God has not said. You will not do what God has not done. I'm going to follow God because I love him and I won't take it back. That's right, that's right, that's right. Yes, amen. All right. I lost y'all about five minutes ago. No, sir. Y'all all excited till I start telling the truth. <laughs> he says again, the Lord, the devil taking them up into exceeding high mountain. They just took them on a pinnacle. Uh huh. Right? Took them to church. Now he's going to bring them to the altar. Jesus Christ, I wish I could have wrote this myself. <laughs> he said, and the devil taking them up into an exceeding high mountain and showed them all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. That is not the altar. When all everybody comes to the altar, they said they all come from different mindsets, they all come from different emotions, they all come from different environments. That's the altar. And showed him. All the issues of the world. All of them. <laughs> he showed you who depressed, who angry, uh -huh. who trying to figure out they got a can of soup tomorrow morning. All right. He showed them all of them. And then he said to them, All these things will I give thee. All these things. All these things. I have to be able to walk like you never walked before. All these things. I'll help you. You just drop down. Call me boss. <laughs> you just say for just one second. Everybody gonna know just you and I. I ain't gonna tell nobody. But you work for me. I don't mind my resume. Open it up, Open it up. Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> I couldn't deal with that little heavenly thing up there. There's too much going on. All that clanging and praising and pushing. I wanted some of that too. Well, I can't get none of that. So I'm offering you the opportunity to have the same thing. Except, except, I'm your bishop now. <laughs> I gotta prove what you can and can't do. And the Lord said, Get this, Satan. Once again, he says, For it is written that thou shalt work the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. So now he's saying, When he's saying you have to do better than that, he's saying, You can't starve me. 
Then he says, you can't stir me. And now he's saying by this word here, you can't save me. Because only Jesus can, y'all not getting this. He says, you can't save me. I come down here to save the world. And you can't give me nothing that I don't already have. And I stop by to encourage somebody that the enemy can't give you something. God ain't already got in place for you. You just got to hold on and wait on it. Everything you think you lost, he got it for you. Everything you think is coming this year, he's going to take care of it. Everything that's hurt you, he's going to fix it. Everything that's broken you, he's going to mend it. If I find myself this morning, I just have two people that can say, Lord, I know you'll take care of me. And the devil's got to do better huh, than that. So, I got to tell you, I'm excited this morning. He says, you'll have to do better than that. He said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. He's telling the enemy, you can't starve me. For I live on the living bread. Yes. And I go by the drinking of the fullness of water. I don't know about you, but he said the devil taking him up to the holy city. Yes. And sitting him on the pinnacle of the temple. Next time you come to the house of God, know that you got a place above all places. Yes. You ain't got to stand in the pulpit to know you're worthy of the Lord. You ain't got to have a collar on to know you're worthy of the Lord. You ain't got to have folks shaking your hand and hugging your neck to know you're worthy of the Lord. Because I heard, heard this great man of God. He said that he took some things. He said, Jesus said unto him that it is written again. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord, the Lord thy God. Now he's saying that you can't stir me. I don't know about you, but if you can't stop me, you sure can't stir me. Is there anybody this morning that says there's only one stirring I got? It's the stirring up of God as you begin to put me out in his word. Is there anybody this morning that can tell the neighbor one good thing? Say, neighbor, neighbor, God will take care of you. 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 Is there anybody this morning can realize what God just did? He said he was born in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothing, and Herod tried to kill him. But Jesus said, you got to do better than that. Because he sent three kings, made gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Sound like to me, it was better than that. That same Jesus got a lame man to walk. Sound like it's better than me. Got a blind to see. Sound like it's better than me, but I heard, heard, got Lazarus to get out his tomb. Sound like it's better than me, but that's not over. When you do better things, you cause bitter people. Went down to the garden and cried out his eyes, said, not my will, not my will, not my will. Not my will, not my will, not my will, but your will. Talking about Jesus, that great man of God, I heard. Cut him on the cross, when they stressed him wide, and they rose him up high. But that wasn't enough, that didn't get it all. Heard. He took a nail in one hand. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Sound like they tried to starve into me. They put a nail in the other hand. Try like they stirred to me. But I heard. He took one between the feet. Seven powerful sayings. Dropped his head down in a lump on his shoulder. 
they said three man to the two robbers huh? said if you can save yourself uh, and save us too uh, but I heard I heard he died on Calvary's cross but I
those who can and those who will. The Lord says, put an offer that you cannot refuse. This has nothing to do with money. This is about value. If you value God, you do what you're supposed to do. If you believe God's hand is on it, you do what you're supposed to do. If you believe God is involved with it, you do what you had not even planned to do. You just know it's God talking at this moment. This ain't no trick. This ain't no, this ain't no treat. This ain't no Halloween. This ain't no witchcraft. This is the spirit of God. You know what he told you. And some of y'all, we got to quit playing. You give it, you'll get it back. More than you ever thought you were going to have. You never know. He may stop an accident that was going to happen. He may stop some paperwork that was coming from the courthouse. You don't know. But if you don't willing to go into an offer with him, why do you still have time? Once you're given, come back to the altar. Once you're given, come back to the altar. Everyone back to the altar. We will not lose, we will not break this bond that God is building right now. And all hearts and minds are tuned to what's happening. God gave me revelation. He sent my mother to give me confirmation in my dream. I'm only being obedient. God, we ask right now for an increase in our belief. God, we give an offer today. Not just because we heard from the preacher, but we heard from the purpose of the preacher. And Lord, we believe that you are going to <clears throat> exalt your spirit in our homes, <clears throat> in our health, <clears throat> in our life, and in our family lives. Lord, we bind any generational curses that are trying to come upon these children right now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke anything that might have befallen from their parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, yeah. uncles, aunties, cousins. We tell them they are pure in you and that they have a sight to be in your life. Lord, I ask right now, whatever heart is hurting that you mend it. Lord, we know some people have lost some loved ones. We ask that you would begin to, come to be a comforter to them. Let them know that every purpose is by your work, by your will, and by your way. Lord, bless all that's said and all that's done. And God, we want to leave here willing vessels, not just from 11 to 1, but from now on. In Jesus' name we pray. And God, all people saying amen. 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 Listen. I think we got the concept of church, but not the concept of God. And until we begin to get the concept of God, we are delaying, not denying, delaying God's blessings upon us. And for some of us, the blessing is just to have a peace of mind. See, we confuse blessing with material things. For some of us, a blessing is just not being even have to cry all the time. Be angry all the time. Let's not get in the way of each other's blessings. Come here with a purpose. And it's not to see if that chair can hold you. It's for you to walk this area praying fellowship, bringing people out of a state that if they had not come this morning, they'd have walked out in the traffic tomorrow. Do you know what we're dealing with here? Do you understand the role of the enemy? It's to have people feel less of themselves 
that they would destroy their own very essence. But God has birthed in all of us power to help deviate the wiles of the devil. So please leave here excited, encouraged. Those who can, I need you back. We're leaving here at 2.30. We'll get you a sandwich like you usually do. Make it on back. Popeye's out of chicken, so we got to go out for the sandwich. Chicken sandwiches, I'm sorry. But I love you all. Love somebody before you leave today. Put your hands up for God, you all this day. I've been enjoying this last four weeks. Has it not been good?